Hello team, welcome to my session on Coffee with Prab and today we're going to discuss about the important areas that you must refer while preparing for IIC Square CCSP exam. One thing I would like to tell you that this exam is much difficult than CISSP because at least you have a very good understanding of network and all that so it is easy for you to manage the CISSP exam but CCSP is a very difficult exam. As I can see, a lot of people fail in CCSP exam. Those who have cleared CISSP in a first attempt, they basically fail miserably in CCSP exam. So it makes me to make this video about the important topics that you should refer while preparing for CCSP exam. I already made the domain wise video, but this video I will try to make it as short as, short as possible to make sure you should focus on these area while preparing for this exam. Who am I? My name is Prab Nair. For more information, you can refer my LinkedIn profile. So let's start with the first part. See, when you're talking about the domain one, which is called as the cloud concepts, architecture and design. Okay, so it's a very important domain and people used to ignore this domain. So in this domain, it's very important for you to understand the different type of service model. We have a IS, we have a PaaS, we have a SaaS. So example like when, when you're talking about the SaaS, we know that okay, Prab, in the SaaS we have a Office 365 or GoToMeeting or a Team.Microsoft. So this is the SaaS solution which is developed by vendor. That is not a twist here. As a cloud security consultant, what is basically the concern we have in the SaaS? Example, limited visibility. In which service model we need more, uh, what you call, we need more uh, uh, controls. We need more customization. So we need in a SaaS. So that kind of a perspective you need because you will be act like a cloud security consultant. You will be act like a cloud security consultant and you're going to refer, you're going to suggest your clients, okay? We should go for SaaS or we should go for PaaS or we should go for uh, IS. Now in the case of IS, operation cost is higher. In the case of SaaS, in the case of PaaS, the application migration is a challenge. We're looking for the open APIs. So because we're taking this action to prevent the risk before it occurs in the organization. So as from a CCSP point of view, you need to have a security understanding of the service models. Then we talk about the deployment model. We have a four type of deployment model. We have a public cloud, private cloud, community hybrid. Okay, Prab, we know that, but there is a twist. The twist is like in a hybrid cloud, what is the requirement? We need a portability and interoperability so that my application able to work seamlessly in my private and public parallelly. What is the reason of going for the community cloud? Sorry, what is the reason of going for the hybrid cloud? BCP DR, cloud bursting. Okay, reuse of investments. So that kind of a context you need to understand in CCSP exam. So service model and deployment model is very, very important for the CCSP exam. Along with that, when we go for any cloud computing, we look for the five important characteristics on demand, broad network access, okay, multi-tenancies, the resource pooling. So you should know their pros and cons. Example, resource pooling, cost effective because one hardware was shared across the multiple tenant, but disadvantage is that data sharing, no tenant isolation. So we're looking for the encryption as a best answer. Broad network access. You can access your cloud services from anywhere, but concern is legal regulatory. So you're getting a point. So it is not about only cloud characteristics. You will just memorize and go for the exam. No, you need to also understand the pros and cons of that particular concept. Moving to the next, another important thing in the domain one, we called as a ISO 17789. You must have a very good understanding about the different type of roles which is there in the ISO 17789. And best thing is that in the CVK third edition, they have captured their roles. The roles are cloud partners, cloud service customer and cloud service provider. Okay, cloud partners, cloud service consume customer and cloud service provider. So you need to have very good understanding about these three roles. Another important thing which is required is called as a good understanding about the cloud technology roadmap. Okay, cloud technology roadmap example, what is the impact of privacy in the cloud? What is the impact of security in the cloud? What is the impact of uh, interoperability, thin line difference between the interoperability portability? Let me tell you why it is important. See, when you're working as a cloud security consultant and you, rec you are recommending an advice to your consumer or to your customer, okay, we need to go for this cloud because tomorrow I want to migrate my applications or I want to use an application across two systems. 
from a forensic point of view i want a portability from forensic point of view i want a governance as a requirement in the cloud environment so that is why it is very important for you to know the cloud technology roadmap security privacy governance is an important area sla is very important because sla is the is the control by which you establish the governance between the two parties okay so that is the most important thing then fog computing iot artificial intelligence machine learning which was introduced in a news labels of ccsp in 2019 is very important how the ai ml is impacting the cloud computing because ai ml required compute they need data and for data they need a compute and cloud is already meeting their requirement so we have a dedicated computing for them that is called as a fog computing so you need to have a very brief understanding about ai ml with the fog computing moving to the next part it's very important for you to trust your cloud provider and how to trust the cloud provider with the help of third party reports so it's very important for you to know the third party reports like soc report soc 2 type 2 we need to validate their hvac system in place we need to validate their availability system in place do they have a appropriate confidentiality and integrity services so that is why the soc 2 type 2 soc 2 reports are very important soc 1 report is very important if you go to youtube and type prop soc report you will get my video which can be definitely helpful for your ccsp exam another important thing which you need to understand about fedram it's very important for you to know the fedram because fedram is a is a government wide program which provide the standardized approach to a security assessment authorization and continuous monitoring for cloud product if you planning to provide any kind of a cloud services to the federal government and all that they need to pass this fedram assessment so fedram assessment then third party assessor which is a role in a fedram it's very important for you to know that jab joint advisory board that is very important for you to know that very good understanding of fips 140-2 because FI, FIPS is basically a standard which is used to certify the security products. So, if you are planning to use for any kind of a federal environment, department, defense, crypto solutions, and all that, so make sure the crypto solution should be compliance with the FIPS standard one four zero two. So, key management when we talking about in the cloud is very important. Then, along with that. you need to know about the pci dss i will share one white paper in the description box make sure you should review the pci dss thoroughly primary objective of pci dss is to address the confidentiality remember that pci dss governance pci dss requirements are important make sure you should not skip that okay so this is the important things we have in the domain one which is called as a cloud concept architecture and design now let's move to the next part which is called as a domain 2 cloud data security In this section, the most important thing is called as a data life cycle because in the data life cycle we have a CSU SAD create, store, use, share, archive, and destroy. So it's very important for you to know the data life cycle. And in every phase, what are the functions and activities we have? You must know that because when we talking about data security in the cloud environment, until unless you don't know what is the different state of data we have, we cannot able to apply the controls. So it is very important for you. to know the different type of controls pros and cons of every phase example data is most vulnerable in the data in use stage data in use so we use masking we use drm when data sent over the network it tls ssl so that understanding is also required then uh, when you talking about different type of storage we have a different type of storage okay like example like in is we talking about the block storage we have a object storage so you must know the difference between the block and object you must know the pros and cons of the block and object like api based is called as a object based storage uh, when you want to process data more faster you go for the block storage so block and object storage you need to know then in the past we have a structure and unstructure you must have a brief understanding about that and you must know the use cases so i will recommend you to review the ccsp dummy guide which give you better visibility about that but that for sure storage is very important for the exam preparation another important thing is called as a data dispersions and their techniques where the data is dispersed across the multiple regions and all that so we have a erasure coding or we have a bit splitting their pros and cons you must know that then cdn content distribution network ultimate goal of the cdn is to provide the content as soon as possible so that is a very important thing for you to know that from a cloud point of view but one concern we have with the cdn one concern we have with the cdn is basically called as a legal regulatory requirement because data is basically diversified across the multiple locations 
okay so that is the one important thing you need to understand ultimate goal of a cdn is to improve the availability uh, reduce the latency okay that is the goal we have but one concern is called as a legal and regulatory concern so you need to have a very good understanding about the cdn then the another important thing is called as a drm and irm utilization it is heavily required in the cloud because we don't have a complete end to end control over the data so drm and irm is very important for the exam then we have another topic called data anonymization and data masking so we have a static and dynamic masking so you need to know the use cases then we talk about the key management placement of a key is very important like client encryption server encryption instance manage encryption external manage key encryptions okay pros and cons of using internal base key encryption external base key encryptions so that understanding is required along with that uh, database level encryption okay if you're talking about encryption on the storage level it is easy to manage but encryption which is happening on the application level it is difficult to manage so encryption levels database encryption transparent encryption pros and cons application level encryption pros and cons that you must be aware about along with that data discovery types edrm electronic discovery reference model then dlp use cases how the dlp will basically use in a cloud how the dlp is going to manage the security in the cloud so that understanding is required so for that i can recommend you to go through the ccsp dummy guide along with the data privacy gdpr is there you need to know the gdpr principles their roles like data controller data processor then we have a crypto shredding which is happening in the last phase of data life cycle how to destroy data in the cloud which is done through a crypto shredding then you need to have a very good understanding about the data retention and their associate policy so and when you talking about dlp in dlp the most important thing is called as a classification and sensitivity of a data so according to that only the dlp will apply in the cloud environment dlp with drm work together as a compensatory control where the DL, drm is basic dlp is basically failed drm is provide the persistent security example like there is a data reside in the cloud by hook and crook i was able to download the data so data now downloaded in some kind of a locations but still remotely we can able to maintain the persistent security of that how when you double click on the file it will ask for the password okay so when he entering the password it need to be establish the online authentication and this is how we can able to corrupt the file so now you getting a point how the drm can be used in a cloud so that understanding is required for the ccsp exam then this is the part which is covered in the domain 2 now third domain which is called as a cloud platform and infrastructure security it is a request to my all the aspirants please give proper attention to domain 3 which is called as a cloud platform and infrastructure security and domain 5 operations so domain 3 when we talking about it is more um provide more from a cloud provider point of example i am a ccsp person i am a cloud security consultant and i am working for the cloud provider or i am working for the company who has their own cloud setup or i want to be involved in building their cloud security solutions you getting a point so from that point of view this domain is basically representing and most of the people failed in ccsp exam because of this domain only because they don't have a visibility how things works in the data center so that is why it is very very important refer the dummy guide and refer the cbk third edition for the domain 3 in domain 3 the first most important thing is the sdn there is a video i created for the sdn which is called as a software defined network where the control layer is a very important layer so very good understanding of a sdn is required you can go to youtube and type prab sdn you will get my video where i have explained everything on a whiteboard in a 10 minutes along with that you can also refer my video of questions which give you good visibility along with that you need to know the compute characteristics like share we have limit is there reservation is there how to use share limit and reservation what is the pros and cons how it impact the dr bcp these compute matrix are very important for you to understand along with that we also cover in domain 3 is called as a virtualization security virtualization security is two type here type 1 and type 2 so type 1 is more secure type 2 is not secure because type 1 is only having a one layer less attack surface is more secure for the systems so you need to have a very good understanding about the type 1 and type 2 hypervisor is a primary attack vector to make sure we should able to protect the hypervisor so that is the important thing we have then we have a hvac heat ventilation air conditioning their temperature 
ओके पॉजिटिव एयर प्रेशराइजेशन नेगेटिव एयर प्रेशराइजेशन प्लेसमेंट ऑफ एच वैक सिस्टम इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर यू टू अंडरस्टैंड फ्रॉम सी सी एस पी एग्जाम पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू वेन यू बिल्डिंग अ डेटा सेंटर वी हैव टू गो थ्रू अ मल्टीपल स्टैंडर्ड वन ऑफ द स्टैंडर्ड इज कॉल्ड एज अ बी आई सी एस आई विच इज कॉल्ड एज अ बिल्डिंग इंडस्ट्रियल इंडस्ट्री कंसल्टिंग सर्विसेज इंटरनेशनल विच इज कॉल्ड बी आई सी एस आई सो यू नीड टू हैव अ ब्रीफ अंडरस्टैंडिंग अबाउट द यूज ऑफ बी आई एस बी आई सी एस आई second is we called as a idca which is called as a international data center authority which talk about the security parameters we need in the data center then we have a nfpa is very important for you to understand which is called as a national fire protection association and most important thing you should not skip is uptime institute you need to know the difference between the tier 1 and tier 2 tier 3 and tier 4 okay so in my recent video of ccsp question i have covered some questions on uptime make sure you should watch that video uptime institute tiers and their difference difference are very important and it is not necessary you have to go in detail uh, configurations and all that you need to know a very high level okay in what is the thin line difference between the tier 1 tier 2 tier 3 tier 4 tier 1 is basically used for less critical data center and tier 4 is basically promote the highest critical data center maximum availability maximum uptime we can get in the tier 4 because uptime institute is talk about the topology so when you building a data center when whenever you building a data center it is very important for you to know the topology you need to go through a particular standard and for that reason we adopt the uptime institute so they say boss if you go by the tier 1 this is the necessary configuration we have by which this is the availability we can achieve and if you have a this kind of a things you can able to achieve this level of availability so tier 1 tier 2 tier 3 tier 4 capture the minimum requirement for the availability parameter so it's very important for you to know the tier types another important thing which is required is a micro segmentation with the help of zero trust one of the best way to reduce the security breach because we limited to one particular host so micro segmentation is very important bcp dr used your cissp questions used your cissp book to understand the bcp dr especially mtd rto rpo there is one video i already made on youtube on bcp dr you can type bcp dr prab nayar you get the video of coffee short which is of the cof cissp based but definitely cissp bcp will help you okay in your cissp bcp bia recovery strategy bcp scenarios okay we have a three different type of scenarios in the bcp so it's very important for you to know the bcp scenario especially bia aspect so this is the part we have in the domain 3 which is called as a cloud platform and infrastructure security then we have a domain 4 which is called as a cloud application security trust me team cloud application security is a high scoring for you because if you did your cssp then it will be cake walk because in the domain 4 the most important thing we have a sdlc phases very important in which phase what activity happen you must know that then security must be start from the phase 1 security design should be come in the design phase threat modeling threat modeling we are doing in the design phase so it's very important for you to know the threat modeling stride full form s t r i d e which is one of the threat modeling framework we have stride s t r i d e stride you need to know the full form of stride then you need to know about in each and every phase what kind of a security activity we are doing because when i join any company they using a pass as a solution how to develop the application in the cloud okay what is the thin line responsibility between the cloud provider and cloud customer in the case of pass so question can be start from domain 4 answer will be from a domain 1 that is why responsibility matrix is very important for you to understand okay then you need to know application normative framework organization normative framework it's very important for you to know that then blue green deployment to prevent the downtime and all that so blue green deployment is very important moving ahead in the application security domain most important thing we have a federation saml oauth open id usage of saml oauth and open id there is a video i made on that so you can refer that video saml prab nair you can type you will get that video oauth used for authorization and open id used for authentication saml offer both saml exchange the assertion which is generated by the identity provider and consumed by the service provider so it's very important for you to understand the federation along with that you need to know the different type of testing first is called as a static application security testing 
second is called as a dynamic application security testing and third is called as an interactive application security testing more aggressive is the IST which is a proactive testing so SAST done with the source code DAST is basically analyzing a response and IST is basically interactive based application security testing so it's very important for you to know the different type of testing and their use cases then API especially the rest and SOAP SOAP is more secure than rest SOAP is basically more scalable than rest rest is basically used in the case when we have a limited latency and all that so you need to know the rest and SOAP difference it's very important for you to understand SOAP API how you adopt how you adopt the API how to integrate the API what is the advantage of API you need to know this in a cloud environment from this exam point of view good understanding of the sandbox environment what is the ultimate goal of a sandbox what is container what is microservices business case of the microservices is very important let me give an example of microservices suppose one application one function of an application hosted in one location one function of an application hosted in other location and one location one application is hosted one application function is hosted on other location so legal regulatory is a concern in the microservices microservice replacing a monolithic architecture right so what is microservice business use case of microservice concern of microservices concern of containerization usage of containerization you know so you need to know all these things so this is basically part of the domain 4 now we're going to discuss about the domain 5 now in domain 5 we have a cloud security operation as I said, domain 3 and domain 5, make sure you should review thoroughly. Okay, so in the domain 5, the it started with the good security group. So we're creating a security group for the segmentations. You need to have a very good understanding of VPN, PPTP, L2TP. Okay, your CISSP knowledge will definitely help you here. IPsec, do not skip their, their uh, type of modes, which is called as a AH and ESP and uh, along with that transport mode and tunnel mode very important you can refer my ipsec pramnar video which will clear your doubt so ipsec and vpn do not skip then kvm keyboard video mouse then dnssec ultimately offer the integrity and authenticity it is used to restrict the dynamic updates dnssec is used to protect against the dns poisoning because in the dns poisoning what happened we dynamically updating the required uh, records from the random servers we need to make sure that okay server record records whatever we are receiving whatever the server records we are receiving it is receiving from the authorized source and with the help of dnssec we can able to verify that how one server who's sending a record it will sign with their public uh, private key and we already maintain the public key of the known servers so by this i can able to verify so dnssec vpn ipsec are very important kvm okay connected to a trusted interface that is the most important thing Make sure your management network should be isolated from the IT network and API gateway, XML gateway, business case, use cases, advantage and disadvantage is very important. Maintenance host, okay, directly impact the availability. So that is an important thing. Cluster host is also very important. Along with that placement of NIDS, HIDS, usage of IDS, very important service management because in cloud, we're dealing with the operation. So you need to have a very good understanding of the operation part. Thin line difference between the incident management, problem management, how change management works, goal of change management, goal of patch management, your CISSP knowledge will help you. Otherwise, you can go to my YouTube video, Prab Nair, change management, Prab Nair, patch management, you will get my video. Then we move ahead to the supply chain management. We have a two type of suppliers tactical supplier and strategic supplier strategic supplier is difficult to replace it is not possible to replace but tactical suppliers and commodity suppliers we can able to replace okay so suppliers type is very important then snmp protocol siem is also very important for the exam preparation now next domain which is called as a legal risk and compliance one of the bottleneck of the ccsp so in this section, the most important thing is to understand the policy and policy type. Policy is the primary document by which we drive the governance. So policy is very important for you to understand. Then good understanding of a contract because contract is the only way you manage the governance between the two parties. As for the contract, provider need to protect the data. As for the contract, customer need to protect the data. So contract is basically help me to resolve the civil disputes. Then you need to have a very good understanding of the e-discovery. 
लीगल होल्ड मल्टी टेनेंट इज अ कंसर्न फॉर द ई डिस्कवरी ओके मल्टी टेनेंट इज द बिगेस्ट कंसर्न फॉर ई डिस्कवरी सो डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ प्राइवेसी प्रोटेक्शन रेगुलेशन लाइक यू एस हैज अट इज कॉल्ड वी हैव दिस एफ ई आर पी ए देन वी हैव अ कॉपा सो कॉपा एंड एफ ई आर पी ए इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट देन इन जी डी पी आर इज देयर पिपडा इज देयर पी आई पी ई डी ए कैनडा देन जी डी पी आर प्रिंसिपल सेवेंटी टू आवर इज अ सिक्योरिटी ब्रीच रिपोर्टिंग वी हैव ओके सो कॉपा एफ ई आर पी ए इज ऑल्सो वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फ्रॉम द यू एस प्राइवेसी एक्ट देन सी सी पी ए इज देयर वन थिंग इज दैट वेन यू टॉकिंग अबाउट डोमेन सिक्स ओके लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स आर डिपेंडिंग अपॉन द डॉक्यूमेंटेशन अंटिल अन यू डोट डॉक्यूमेंट नो वन विल टेक द अकाउंटेबिलिटी सो डॉक्यूमेंट एवरीथिंग विद इन योर प्रोवाइडर इन रिटर्न एग्रीमेंट अंडरस्टैंड द लीगल जूरिजिक्शन दैट अप्लाई टू डेटा इन डिफरेंट कंट्रीज और रीजन दैट कैन बी चैलेंज फॉर द कस्टमर CSP, which is called Cloud Service Provider, are controlled and bound by the law of the nation where they incorporated. So make sure whenever the dispute happen, they first respect the law of the land where they operate, and then respect the law of the land or the customer where the data is going to be processed. So it's very important for you in the case of dispute, which law will be applicable. Then in the legal term, like you know, disaster recoveries, we have customer use cloud service and CSP, and uh, which jurisdiction need to be follow. good understanding of the audit you know challenge associated with the audit forensic investigation forensic challenges okay example like multi tenant so it's a challenge from a forensic point of view we are unable to extract the data so right of audit is very important by which we manage the forensic so this is how we can able to challenge then good understanding of the audit life cycle is very important then risk management is very important you can use a cssp risk management knowledge in the ccsp then vendor management then contract management then we have a cvss common vulnerability scoring system vulnerability assessment and penetration testing their process so this is the important things so in cvss we have a environmental score based on which you basically take a action so that is a important thing is there so this is all uh, in the ccsp to topics we have that you must be know when you preparing for this exam first book you can refer the cbk third edition which is recently announced along with that complimentary you can use a dummy guide okay which give you good visibility if you find this video useful do share in your network and if you new to my youtube channel subscribe to my youtube channel click on the bell icon and you can also refer my ccsp playlist where you can find ccsp questions make sure you should practice those questions i'm sure it will not be a regret for you okay and uh, thank you for watching this video bye